Welcome to Generation Digital Workforce, the podcast that's here to explore the role of robotic process automation and other digital technologies. Whether you're just getting started or you're looking for advanced strategies and tactics, if you're curious about where human and digital workers are coming together to transform the future of work, then this podcast is for you. All right, let's get into the show. Hi, my name is Danny Major. I'm the Chief Technical Officer at Full Time. I'm going to use the next few minutes just to answer some questions on our thought pod that have been generated from some of our community users. So first off, the question is around actually what trends are we seeing within the, the modern workplace? And actually, this is a, an interesting one that tends to span different industries in their adoption of, of automation, which then obviously affects the, the modern workplace. So I think the first significant trend that I'm seeing is actually the shift in employee behavior to automation and, and in specifically intelligent automation, and allowing them really actually to start pulling on these type of capabilities within their organization. And I think the reason for that is a clearer delineation between tasks that are suitable for digital workers, as well as tasks that are suitable for people. So organizations have always really known what people are good at and probably what people are less good at. But again, I think as the industry has matured and the understanding of what this type of technology can do for an organization, when they understand more around where the digital workers can actually complement an organization and complement business processes, this has actually led individuals to be less fearful around what the digital workers are doing and allow them to embrace this type of technology. I think the other shift that I'm seeing within the modern workplace is really this viewpoint of an augmented workforce. So once you understand what a digital workforce can do, how intelligent automation can support the way in which business processes are executed and supported, this view of an augmented workforce materializes where actually people and digital workers can move tasks around each other, dependent on the best resource fit for the job. So if you have a particular sensitive to scenario or something that requires some type of empathy, obviously human beings are a great use within those types of processes. However, if you have different types of activities where information is potentially being moved around different systems and, and lots of repeatable activities are being utilized, then actually they're great tasks for, for digital workers as well. And again, as the capabilities of intelligent automation matures, the skill sets of the digital workers become more apparent organizations can lean on these digital workers for these more cognitive processes as well. So really just to summarize the shift within the modern workplace is really about having organizations being able to have clear understanding around how they're introducing digital workers within their, within their workplace. So the next question is actually around what industries are we seeing adopted and embracing these new types of technologies and also these new ways of working. So we're still seeing a lot of success within the financial services and insurance, utilities and energy and utilities as well, and also healthcare and manufacturing. And this is really across the front, middle and back office. So lots of different facets within organizations being able to benefit through embracing this type of technology and this type of ways of working. One of the clear front runners I'm actually seeing more recently is actually public sector organizations. So because of the similarities in processes, we're seeing these organizations that operate within the public sector, being able to have a large amount of, I suppose, sharing and resource for the artifacts that they create. So because of these systems and application consistencies, and I suppose this community-minded sharing nature that goes on means that actually processes can be given between different organizations and allow them to almost leapfrog a lot of those automation definition and automation build activities. And I think this is something that will proliferate into the industry as well, as more capabilities are more easily shared between different industries as well, not just within the public sector. So the next question is around what trends are you seeing and what types of processes or organization wishing to automate? So again, I suppose coming back to the trend process, actually we're again seeing this type of shift in the types of processes that are being automated. Organizations are actually also being more daring in the types of things that they're automating first off. So again, if you rewind 18 months ago, organizations would probably traditionally focus on back office tasks, so things that maybe are invisible to their end users and I suppose quite repeatable and structured in nature, again, possibly moving information between different systems. 
Again, I think with the capabilities that are now available within intelligent automation platforms, being able to utilize intelligent services such as understanding unstructured information or even working in different languages, we're seeing organizations, as I said, being a little bit more daring in the types of processes that they're going after. So it might be processes that interface over email, so allowing people to, or uh, even allowing digital workers even to read and understand and respond to queries over email. It might even be working in some high value tasks within finance about actually processing invoices. So obviously working with monetary information within an organization. So this daring nature, this shift is from my perspective actually being powered and fueled by a greater understanding of what intelligent automation can do, a greater understanding of those use cases, but again, also the emergence of more intelligent capabilities and more intelligent components within automation platforms, allowing organizations to address a much wider set of use cases. And the value there being allowing them to move away from the traditional high volume, low complexity type tasks. The last part we have here is was there ever a year of the chatbot? What organizations can expect from conversational AI in the future? So I think there was a lot of hype and expectation around what chatbots could deliver, how conversational interfaces could support organizations. But I think the fact that channel shifting is actually quite a complex thing to do. By having chatbots and conversational interfaces available as an organization to allow your end users or internal users to communicate, that channel existing doesn't mean that people are going to adopt it. So what we're seeing actually is now is this emergence of having the conversational AI available to users of a process, but having this as an additional channel, an additional medium that can be utilized rather than the sole. And this is really about giving users the flexibility for them to interact in a medium that best suits them. My also view is actually conversational AI still has a, a, a lot to play. And again, as capabilities as, such as digital work is being able to understand, read and re, uh, respond to unstructured information with, within emails, conversational AI has a few different facets. So the emergence of, I suppose, more readily available email triage use cases, I think, is definitely going to be a trend and where I most see value in, in conversational AI playing a role in the future. Thank you for taking the time and listening, and there'll be more ThoughtPod episodes to be shared shortly. Thank you. You've been listening to Generation Digital Workforce. If you want to hear more about RPA, AI, and other cognitive technologies that are shaping the future of work, join us next time as we continue to go deeper on these topics with industry innovators and experts. To make sure you never miss a future episode, subscribe to the show in your favorite podcast player. And if you've liked what you heard today, please leave us a review. It's one of the best ways to help more people find valuable content. For show notes and more info, visit us at blueprism.com slash podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time.